Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the construction and operation of alternator. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notifications. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic. Construction and operation of alternator. It is also called a synchronous generator or AC generator. In alternator, the armature winding is mounted on the stationary part called stator and field winding is placed on the rotating part rotor. So the armature winding is available as a stator. Field winding is available as rotor. Just opposite of the DC machine. I will see the stator frame. In a DC machine, the outer frame serve a to carry magnetic flux, but in alternator, it is used for holding armature winding and stampings in position. So normally in DC motor that is the outer cover that will carry the magnetic flux. But here we are holding the armature winding and the stampings. Frames are made from mild steel plates welded together to form the frame having a box type section. So it is a mild steel plates. Ventilator. Ventilation is maintained with the help of holes cast in the frame. So during the heat we need to maintain the ventilation that is with the help of hole cast in the frame we can maintain the ventilation. I will go to the stator core. The stator core is supported by stator frame. In the stator frame the stator core is placed. It is built up of lamination of magnetic ion or steel alloy. In order to avoid the losses, the lamination is given of steel or iron alloy. I will see the further detail. The slots for placing the armature conductors lie along the inner periphery of the core. So in that, we have to place the armature conductor that is lie along the inner periphery. The laminations are insulated from each other with varnish or paper and have spaces between them to allow cooling air to pass them. Right? So already laminations are there that is insulated from the varnish or paper and the spaces between them allow. There is a spaces available so the cooling air will pass through that so that we can maintain the heat. Then the remaining details. The slots may be wide open, semi closed or fully closed. The three types are available. These three slots, the, in these slots three phase delta or star connector windings are placed. Right. So that uh, we are placing the winding either delta or star connected. So three types are available. So widely open, fully open. You can place the coils here. So this is the width is there, but in the here the open is very less, semi closed. Only few portion is open here, fully open, wide open. So it is fully closed. Inside the coils are placed. Both the sides are closed. So in this we are placing the three phase, either star or delta connected winding. Now we'll see the stator. Now we'll see the diagram of the stator. So this is the construction of the stator. We know that field winding placed in a stator. Armature winding is placed in the rotor. So this is the armature winding, stator frame, slots. So this is three phase wire. These slots may be three type, either fully open, semi closed, semi open or fully closed. Wide open, semi closed, or fully closed. So, this is the entire cross sectional view of the stator. So, we already discussed stator winding is placed in the armature winding is placed in the stator, field winding is placed in rotor. So, these are the stator winding. So, this type may be wide open, semi closed, or fully closed. Now, we will go to the rotor, rotating part. So it is a flywheel like structure having a large number of alternate N and S ports 
fixed to them to the outer rim so having the flywheel like a flywheel structure alternate n and s poles are there so that then only attracts and repulsion takes place these poles are excited by providing dc supply so we have to provide the dc supply to this poles since the field magnet rotates the dc supply is provided through the slip ring and brushes so this is a rotating part we need to give the excitation through the dc supply so the because of rotating part it is provided through slip ring and brushes that is very similar to our dc machine now we we'll see the types there are two types of rotor used in alternator salient pole salient pole means projected poles are projected outside non salient pole is not projected is available in a circular manner there is no extension smooth cylindrical pole so here projected here not projected salient pole non salient pole salient means projected now we'll see the salient pole and non salient pole one by one first we'll see the salient pole or projected pole it has a large number of projected poles having their core bolted into the heavy magnetic wheel of the cast iron or steel there are projected poles are there n number of projected poles are there now we'll see the diagram so that the description can be understood easily so this is the salient pole or projected pole see these poles are projected in case of non projected mean is available in as a circle there is no projection so this s pole here also s pole n pole and n pole this dc supply is given so it is connected in such a way that the in, because of the current incoming and outgoing it produces n pole or s pole see this this end is connected here this end is connected here the connections are given such a way that it will provide the it will produce the n and s pole alternatively this is the shaft in that shaft the poles are projected over the pole the coils are available field windings are available that will produce n and s pole alternatively so this is a projected pole projected shaft field winding now we'll see the description so we have n number of large number of projected poles they are made of thick steel lamination we know that lamination used for reducing the losses used for low and medium speed alternator projected pole used for low and medium 125 to 500 rpm non salient pole smooth cylindrical used for high speed such generators are characterized by their large diameter and short axial length diameter is large and the length is short the next type is just opposite small diameter and long axial the pole core and pole shoe are laminated to minimize the eddy current losses right this pole core and pole is laminated now we'll go to the next type non salient pole so the second type is non salient pole or smooth cylindrical pole that is poles are not projected here it consists of smooth forged steel cylinder having a number of slots mild out at the intervals along with the outer periphery for accommodating the field coils so it is a smooth cylinder smooth cylindrical smooth cylindrical having the slots available at the intervals in that we can place the coils now we'll see the diagram so this is the non salient pole or smooth cylindrical pole so there is no projection the coils are available inside in a cylindrical form so here n pole and s pole is there two pole this is four pole n pole s pole n pole again s pole this vertically n pole horizontally s pole is available so these intervals are not uniform it may be different the poles having place at the non uniform intervals so these are all two types two pole and four pole in previous case the poles are projected now it is not projected the coils are available inside it is in the form of cylindrical smooth cylindrical form i will see the description 
it is used for high speed machine designed for two or four poles so it is for high speed earliest case low speed two or four region corresponding to the central polar area are left unslotted right so the two or four regions there is there is no there is left unslotted so that is available here here two unslotted here four regions are unslotted now we'll see the remaining the central polar area are surrounded by winding field winding placed in the slots so this these dotted lines are nothing but here windings so here we can place the windings field coils are so arranged around this polar area that flux density is maximum on the polar central line and gradually falls on either side so this is the polar this here the maximum thereby it falls so at the central polar area it is maximum now we will see the further detail here poles are non salient that is they do not projected outside this is smooth cylindrical they are characterized by very small diameters and long axial length the earlier case large diameter and short axial length this one small diameter and large axial length they are preferred for high speed earlier one low speed 1500 to 3000 rpm so this is the detail about non salient pole smooth cylindrical pole now we will see the excitation system used for this alternator an alternator is a separately excited machine its field winding require dc excitation separate dc excitation is needed it is generated generally supplied by a dc generator mounted on the same shaft as that of alternator so this alternator is coupled with dc generator from that the excitation supply is given i will see the working principle when the field winding in the rotor is given dc supply a magnetic field is produced so based on the excitation system the supply is given to the dc supply given to the field winding so magnetic field is produced when the rotor rotates we know that it's alternator so this mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy that is we need to rotate by using the we need to rotate the um, alternator so when it is rotated the stationary armature conductors cut the rotating magnetic field of the rotor so here the stationary magnetic field is there in the field winding so that will cut the rotating magnetic field of the rotor and so by faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and emf is induced in the armature conductor right so this is the normal basic principle when the conductor cuts the magnetic field when the current carrying when the stationary conductor cuts the magnetic field based on the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction emf is induced in the armature conductor so the emf induced in the armature conductor hence a current flows in the conductor because of em current is flowing the direction of induced emf given by fleming's right hand rule because this is the generator we need to follow the fleming's right hand rule for motor fleming's left hand rule the frequency of the induced emf depends on the number of n and s moving part as a conductor in one second so the frequency is based on number of n and s pole the expression for frequency separate video available so in this video we discuss construction and operation of the alternator stator followed by the rotor two types of rotor then excitation system then working principle based on the electromagnetic induction it is emf is induced thereby current is flowing Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Thank you for listening. All the best for your examination.